Uh, Tom Davidson here, CEO of ACDC Metals. Uh, it's a great day today to have our scoping study released to the market for our Goshen Central project. This has been a two years in the process since IPO listing in January of 23. And it's really the culmination of lots of studies done. We've done two rounds of resource estimations. Uh, we've done the bulk sample test work. So all the methodological inputs have been identified. We've run it through a, a process pilot plant. We've identified all the products and we've also then all done all the marketing studies and engaged TZMI, mineral experts. We've worked with Adamas Intelligence for the rare earth component. And we've gone all the way downstream processing uh, to produce an MREO. So there's really been a really strong, strong lot of inputs feeding into this scoping study. And that's what gives us the great confidence into presenting these robust numbers to the market today. So what is the scoping study? So I guess the, the point of doing a scoping study is really to be able to pull together the, the basic inputs for, for a mining operation and to really test uh, the, the positives and negatives of the project and see if it actually will come together and there's something there to work with, enabling you to test um, options and do trade-offs and to really see if there's something in the resource that you can work with and identify opportunities to further expand the project as you work through these stage gates. Uh, obviously, as part of a scoping study, you're not working with a full measured indicated uh, resources and you've got inferred materials within that. Uh, but you, you, and you're really working with those initial first steps of inputs. But it's really a great step to really identify that, yes, you have got something here to work with, and it's really a good, strong basis to move forward and, and really progress through those steps. So the scoping study has, has provided us a 14-year life of mine. Uh, so that's a 6 million tonne per annum throughput through the ROM, and that would enable us to produce, on average, about 100,000 tonnes per annum of heavy mineral concentrate. So that's your zircon and titanium and also producing about 6,500 to 7,000 tonnes of rare earth mineral concentrate. So that's our phase one operation. Uh, so that's a $310 million capex. Uh, with a, and if that was just to be phase one, that would go through and produce those two products. That gives us a payback of around three and a half to four years. So really strong economics. Uh, but also as part of the ACDC strategy was working on that downstream processing. So that's where we take the uh, rare earth processing plant and that's where we take the monazite and we do the, the caustic crack to produce a mi mixed rare earth oxide. And that's what we call phase two. And so the project and the, and the results presented today, uh, especially if you look on page three there, where we go through the options of different pricing scenarios and also the phase ones and phase two uh, results. Phase two is where we introduce the REPP um, plant for additional 120 million capex. And that will take us through to producing that downstream processing product as well as a heavy mineral, mineral concentrate at the mine gate. Uh, these results show strong strong results across, we've, and we've looked at spot pricing all the way through to forecast prices for 2030. So it shows even at today's five-year average price, it still shows that there's strong economics there and the project is a viable project. And also when we look at to 2030, where we would look to be taking this into production, there's some really strong results there and it really gives us a strong foundation and, and excitement to keep on progressing the project. So where we like these heavy mineral sand uh, assets with the dual optionality of a HMC and a rare earth concentrate is you get to ride that volatility of rare earths. And so the, the basis of the, of the economics of the project is we're really trying to make sure that we have a strong foundation on the heavy mineral concentrate. So that's your zircon and titania. And so given that they're really mature markets, it's a well understood marketing strategy and the final products and where they go to and what they're worth is was well understood. And so we've been trying to make sure that the, essentially the plant could wash its own face on the HMC. And so as you can see there, we've, we've been able to show that the project can cover about 90% on average, the cost of the operating cost based on HMC. And that really enables the project to run the, to essentially take the cream of the rare earths. And that's where we think that these, these types of assets um, provide an advantage over those pure rare earth assets where you could potentially have higher capexes for your hard rocks. Um, and then you got to ride through those lower grades of the clay, clay hosted rare earths. Um, and so that's where this dual revenue stream really provides an advantage over those other projects. So if we look at the basis the, and the assumptions in the project, so a 14 year, year mine life, how do we boost and where's the upside further um, work that can be done? And so it's really based on, if you go back to our 2024 resource update, where we had that 5% wireframe and you can see where we could see that a lot of it still sits outside of the indicator zone. And that's really the carrot for us to go back and conduct further drilling and to then bring that into the resource and then really target that head grade. Um, and so you can see in our sensitivity graph there where the, the head grade is our most sensitive 
uh, item. And so obviously, if we're able to increase that in those first few years, that'll really push up the IRR and, and, and really produce the results back for the, for the project. So next steps for the project. Uh, so based on our resource update in 2024 in December, the resource geologists uh, had recommendations for further mineralogy work to really define our domains of the 5% and 3% Y-frames. Uh, and generally, you can see a trend uh, as you get higher grades, the assemblage should get stronger. Uh, at this stage, we've used a, a conservative approach on our mineral assemblage. And so we're hoping with this extensive uh, mineralogy program that we should be able to then show that the higher grade zone will present a higher assemblage. And obviously that will feed straight back into the, to the mine plan, which will then increase the economics of the project. So that's really our next focus at the moment is to really push through that mineralogy. Uh, we've, we've got all those samples already from past drilling. So those composites are being assembled together at the moment, and then will be pushed through to the lab uh, currently. And um, we're, so we're looking to get those results back shortly, and we look forward to be able to present them to the market. So we've been really busy in the background, and there's been lots of work going on by lots of parties and, and, and lots of consultants assisting the company through this project. And there's lots more work coming up for the next few months. So as I mentioned, there's the mineralogy work underway. Hopefully, if that comes back with the results that we're hoping, then that would then enable us to be able to go along and do a resource update. And so that would enable us to look at the mineral assemblage and also then look at the categorization. And so hoping that we can upgrade some of the tons and that will really then allow us to extend the mine plan. As you notice that the 14 year mine plan and with those tons that have processed, it's around 80 odd million tons for a life of mine. That's only about 15% of our total resource. Uh, so there's a huge upside there for extension of life of mine. Um, and then that would, would directly relate to NPV increase also. And so as part of that other work coming forward, uh, we have the retention license that we're currently underway at the moment. So that's really a, as we go through our exploration licenses, we then move into a retention license on the way to a mining license. Uh, so retention license gives us another 10 more years, five to 10 years. And we're going through those applications at the moment. And that's required us to submitting uh, data to validate that there's an economic, potentially economic process uh, project there. And we're working that through with the department at the moment. So this really is a big moment for the company. We've been listed for just over two years. And this has really been the focus for the project is to really identify this strategy of a vertically integrated heavy mineral sand operation that will then take the rare earth concentrate and produce a mixed rare earth concentrate to have really have that downstream processing optionality in Australia, which is currently is not in operation at the moment. There are, there are a few planned, uh, but none operating. So it really is a strong, strong moment for the company to stake that we've got a project here and a strategy that looks to work. And so the project obviously provides that geopolitical point of view as well. So rare earths, are really a strong talking point at the moment. The critical minerals that the project is identifying, so zirconium, titanium, uh, and, the, and obviously the rare earths. And we do have a good mix of that magnetic rare earth, so the neodymium, praedysium, dysprosium, and terbium. Uh, so we really have those really strong metals that everyone's really after at the moment. And so it really gives the project a good spotlight. And thirdly, it's really the, the, the supportive nature of the Victorian government at the moment. The Critical Minerals Roadmap being released in December last year identified the Goshen Central project as one of those projects that can really provide that supportive to the roadmap. Uh, and so that through that assistance, that's really enabling us to get a good traction on going through these retention license applications. And we're, we're seeing a really supportive um, environment. And obviously with these peer projects around us as well, permitting is progressing, mine licensing applications is, is progressing. And so it really is showing that there's a good environment there for funding and for the strategy of these projects that they can work. Thanks for watching and we look forward to bringing more good work and more good, great results for shareholders as we look to build this project.